it's the way that it works. So here's, here's what we do in the Rockefeller Habits. We know this is the, the challenge, the, the battle that we're fighting. First thing we do is to get really, really clear on our strengths and weaknesses and where we stand and crystal clear on our core values so we have a stronger foundation. Then we take this vision and we clarify it and we amplify it to make it much more compelling so that we're driven, so that it bothers us inside if we're not making progress because we feel that we have to do something. And then we take these distractions and drains or, and through this methodology we use called stops and we eliminate a bunch of this stuff. We free up our bandwidth and get a bunch of it out of the way and kind of cleanse the system if you will. Then to make it even more powerful, the third thing we do is that we pick you know, a couple of priorities, maybe one, maybe two or three priorities every quarter that we obsess about in a company. Very tangible priorities that we will take on or rocks that we will crush every quarter. So then we have a 90 day period where we focus on this, these three things here. And until we completely crush them, not play with them, not start them, crush them, finish them. Interestingly, as we do that, usually that adds to and strengthens our foundation. Our business usually gets stronger with each of these things that we crush and complete. Next quarter we say, you know what, we only have this one big thing we're going to deal with and we crush that and again adds to our foundation. Again, it's just a game. And we just keep going through this process quarter after quarter and what happens at the end of a couple of years, two or three years, we have crushed more of these obstacles or opportunities than most companies would in a decade. We've done it in two years. And that's great for our progress, but we're also stronger and smarter as a company. So said differently, we get more of the right things done than other companies would. They're still playing with the first one or the second one. Does this all make sense? It's a game, but the problem is as human beings, sometimes when this isn't clear enough, we get excited about this, and then we get excited about this, and oh, we start this, but then oh, we go over here, and we just we get distracted. So all this is is a framework and a set of tools to get clearer on this so it compels us like you wouldn't believe and everyone in a company. To get clearer on our foundation and our values so we don't deviate from them and undermine the structure. To eliminate the noise that, that wastes our time on lower value activities that don't really do what we need to. And then to carve out and make such a high priority transparently on these things that will make a massive difference. And this is the foundation of the Rockefeller habits in the way we look at it today. There's people, strategy, execution, and cash. People, strategy, execution for cash. Four pillars that have to be strong in your business to have sustainable success. How do you know you have a good strategy? You continue to grow and your margins continue to be strong as you grow. So what happens for a lot of businesses, they get obsessed on one, they neglect another, and then they get a wake up call. And what we're trying to do in this methodology is to look at what happens to companies that continually grow without lots of drama. Other examples that we see is some people are so focused on people and culture and again when the market's good it's okay but at some point if you get weak on execution you're going to have a wonderful company with a wonderful culture but no profit. So the challenge as you grow you're never going to have them perfectly aligned and they're not going to be perfectly balanced that's not realistic but as you grow what you want to do is to have them grow in decent ratio so that you don't get yourself in trouble and cause your business to go into jeopardy. By the way, anyone ever been involved in a company where this thing called cash got really weak? That's a nightmare. You know the worst thing about having weak cash? I've seen it with clients. They spend 80% of their time trying to keep the banker happy. Literally, and the banker becomes your best friend and you have lunch every week and it's not nice. But the worst thing is it hurts the business. Never mind the cash flow issues, it hurts your business because you have to ignore everything else just to keep the line of credit. It's challenging. So again, as human beings, we tend to pay attention to these things when we have to. In this methodology, we're trying to get you to maintain them along the way. And that's why the most important thing we recommend is you rotate your focus between people, strategy, execution, and cash.